I just like the sound. Wahane! 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 I had to get it a hundred nights. I had to go get a better price. I had to fight like a hundred nights. Well, never I did a hundred nights. You think you need to remember? Repeat. Y'all know what comes first in this show. We definitely showing love. If y'all know my body, y'all know we showing some love on this show. Shout outs to Doc Spills and Iron Mastery Academy. Like I told you, they making trading simple. Learning how to invest by just simply matching your colors you match your colors and you win trades man i'm telling you guys this is simple and i think this is what we all should be getting into as far as managing our own money and managing our own finances wristwatch go tick tock but it ain't there for the timing i put that boy on payroll he conversate with the clients this ain't no baby boy shit this only if it surround your mind with greatness some of it will rub off this is my office this is where i start my day and every day i read something form a habit of reading every day oh and like i love what you're doing as far as the re remember repeat because that's imperative man a lot of times including myself when i first started getting back into reading and always, 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 family, remember this. Read, remember, and repeat. Oh, All man, you have to do with that, man. Big Mitch, man, thank you. Welcome, welcome, Night Owls. Welcome, gang, to the night show. You know what I mean? Read, remember, repeat. It's your host with the most, Michael Mother Boy. And we doing what we do here. We reading the books and coding some good information. Napoleon Hill's Philosophy of Success, the 17 original lessons. Um, hey, man, let's start the night show. You know what I mean? Tap into the morning show if you didn't see it. The metaphysician knows that the death of a dear friend or loved one need not merely be, bring sorrow. It may serve as an inspiration to nobler efforts and deeper thinking through the transmutation of emotional feelings. The power of thought is the one unsolved mystery of the world. We have found no evidence anywhere of the existence of energy except in one form. It is neither negative nor positive, but all energy can be applied in either a negative or positive form. Thought is an expression of energy. It is precisely as powerful when expressed in a negative form as it is when expressed in a positive form. Therefore, the energy of thought used to express the feeling of great sorrow, loss, or disappointment can be transmuted into positive expression and made to inspire noble endeavor. The transmutation hinges entirely upon the control of the emotion. Hence, the necessity of acquiring a habit of voluntary expression of enthusiasm. There is but one kind of thought energy, but it can be given many kinds of expression either negative or positive, or a combination of both. Reasoning on this simple pr premise, one can easily see that any negative emotion can be changed into a helpful positive feeling. In this possibility, one may find the most profound application for enthusiasm. The same energy that brings the pain of sorrow may be converted and made the joy of creative action in connection with one's definite major purpose or even some minor purpose here is where self-discipline comes to one's aid for only the self-disciplined person can transmute sorrow into joy control enthusiasm steps up the vibration of thought and makes the faculty of the imagination more alert it clears the mind of negative emotions by transmuting them into positive emotions thereby preparing the way for the expression of faith it aids the digestive organs in functioning normally it gives a pleasing, convincing color to the tone of voice. It takes the drudgery out of labor. It adds to the attractiveness of the personality. It inspires self-confidence. It aids in the maintenance of sound physical health. It gives the necessary form to one's desire and influences the subconscious section of the mind to act with promptness on these desires. It generates enthusiasm on the part of others for it is contagious as the measles or the whooping cough. Enthusiasm converts an order taker into a first-class salesman. There has been a salesman worthy of that title who could not turn on his enthusiasm at will and sustain it as long as he desired. 
Enthusiasm takes the dryness and boredom out of public speech by establishing harmony between the speaker and the audience. Thus, it is an indispensable quality for anyone whose occupation depends upon the spoken word for its success. The enthusiastic speaker takes control of the audience at will. Enthusiasm gives brilliance to the spoken word and develops an alert memory. Being a sort of radiation or spirit, enthusiasm is closely related to, or at least attuned to, infinite intelligence. But far and away, the most important functions of enthusiasm are these. It serves as the major factor in converting negative emotion into positive emotion, and it prepares the mind for the development and expression of faith. Compared with these, all other functions of enthusiasm are insequential inconsequential enthusiasm is the action factor of thought where it is strong enough it forces one into action appropriate to the motive that inspired it to develop the habit of enthusiasm accurate thinking is the modest operandi for combining the emotions of the heart and the reasoning power of the head in whatever proportions each may demand Enthusiasm, therefore, is an essential factor in effective thinking. One may take certain steps that will lead to the development of controlled enthusiasm, and they are, one, adopt a definite major purpose and a definite plan for attaining it, and go to work carrying out the plan, now, right where you stand. Two, back that purpose with an enthusiastic motive for its attainment. Let the desire become a burning desire fan, burning desire, fan it, Coax it and let it dominate your mind at all times. Take it to bed with you at night and get up with it in the morning. Make it the basis of all your prayers. Three, write out a clear statement of both your definite major purpose and the plan by which you hope to attain it, together with a statement of what you intend to give in return for its realization. Four, follow the plan through with persistence based on all the enthusiasm you can generate. Remembering that a weak plan persistently applied is better than a strong plan applied intimately or without enthusiasm. Five, keep as far away as possible from joy killers and confirmed pessimists. Their influence is deadly. Substitute in their place associates who are optimistic and above all. Do not mention your plans to anyone except those who are in full sympathy with you, such as the members of your mastermind alliance. Family. We're going to give y'all this nice sauce, and then after that, we'll be right back on number seven. See, the point is, you don't know how much future you've got. What's gone is gone. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Some of you have had divorces. Some of you... Um, have probably had bankruptcies. Some of you have had terrible things happen in the past. But what's gone is gone. It's in the past. And to spend your time focusing on the past is to spend the only thing that you've got, and that's what's right here, right now, because the sand never stops running. This is all we've got. And to spend your time now thinking of what happened there is making absolute certain that the future is going to be the same as the past. Now, I don't suppose many of us spend a lot of time thinking about that, but a lot of us spend a lot of time making that error. Family, we are back. We're jumping right in number seven. Buckle your seats, let's go. If you are overtaken by temporary defeat, study your plans carefully, and if need be, change them, but do not change your major purpose because you have met with defeat. Never let a day pass without devoting, number eight, never let a day pass without devoting some time, even though it be ever so little, to carry out your plans. Remember, you are developing a habit of enthusiasm, and habits call for repetition through physical action. Number nine. Auto-suggestion is a powerful factor in developing any habit. Therefore, keep yourself sold on the belief that you will obtain the object of your definite major purpose, no matter how far you may be from it. 
Your own mental attitude will determine the action of your subconscious mind in fulfilling your purpose. Keep the mind positive at all times, remembering that enthusiasm thrives only on a positive mind. It will not mix with fear, envy, greed, jealousy, doubt, revenge, hatred, intolerance, or procrastination. Enthusiasm thrives on a positive action produced by a positive mind. From here on out, you are on your own, but remember that every person lives in two worlds. One, the world of his own mental attitude, which is greatly influenced by his associates and his physical surroundings. And two, the physical world in which he must struggle for a living. The circumstances of the physical world may be greatly shaped by the way one relates to his mental world. His mental world he may control. The physical world is beyond his control, except to the extent that he attracts the portion of it that harmonizes with his mental attitude. Wow. Enthusiasm is a great leavening force in one's mental attitude and mental world. It gives power to one's purpose. It makes for harmony within one's mind. It helps to free the mind of negative influences. It wakes up the imagination and stirs one to action in shaping the circumstances of the physical world to one's need. A man without enthusiasm or definite major purpose resembles a locomotive with neither steam nor a track on which to run nor a destination toward which to travel. General Douglas MacArthur had this to say about enthusiasm. You are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your self-confidence, as old as your fear, as young as your hope, as old as your despair. Years may wrinkle your skin, but to give up enthusiasm wrinkles your soul. Y'all hear Molly out there. He, he just running. He doing his thing. It's my baby boy. You know what I mean? But to give up enthusiasm wrinkles your soul. Now visualize yourself bursting with enthusiasm, power, and pride because of your sincere, deep knowledge and conviction that you are successfully moving towards your goals. Repeat these words. I sizzle with enthusiasm and power. 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 Chapter 10, family. My God. I mean, we moving. We'll definitely be done with this book. I would say beginning of the next week. So let's keep going. Chapter 10, Creative Vision. Imagination is the key to all human achievements. The mainspring of all human endeavor, the secret door to the human soul. Imagination inspires endeavor in connection with material things and ideas associated with them. Creative vision extends beyond the interest in material things. It judges the future by the past and concerns itself with the future more than with the past. Imagination is influenced and controlled by the powers of reason and experience. Creative vision pushes both of these aside and attains its ends by new ideas and methods. Imagination recognizes limitations, handicaps, and opposition. Creative vision rides over these as if they did not exist and arrives at its destination. Imagination is seated in the intellect of man. Creative vision has its base in the spirit of the universe, which expresses itself through the brain of man. Note. Well, these distinctions, if you would know the difference between genius and mediocrity, for genius is the product of creative vision, while mediocrity is the product of the imagination. I'm going to read that again. Note well these distinctions, if you would know the difference between genius and mediocrity, for genius is the product of creative vision, while mediocrity is the product of the imagination. I'll be one that often carries power and attains stupendous ends. Our country needs creative vision now as it has never needed it before. 
Opportunities for expressing personal initiative were never as great as they are at this time. The nation has plenty of brawn and muscle, but it needs an expression of brain power, and it needs it badly. Two things are essential, more essential perhaps than all others. For unfolding and developing creative vision, one is sincere willingness to work, and the worth, and the other is a definite motive that is sufficient to inspire willingness to go the extra mile with a positive mental attitude. The great leaders of this and past generations begin their careers in the humblest of capacities by applying some combination of the 17 principles of individual achievement. They promised themselves the goals they had set their hearts upon, but did not complain of the lack of opportunity. Andrew Carnegie began as a bobbin boy in a textile mill at wages of 50 cents a day. Charles M. Squab, who promoted himself to the position of Mr. Carnegie, first assistant began as a stagecoach driver and later as a day laborer in the street mills of Pennsylvania. Henry Ford began as an engineer for an electric light and power company. Thomas A. Edison began as a newsboy and later took up the work of te tele telegraphy. The list could be extended to exclude, include the list can be extended to include practically every leader this nation has ever produced, each and every one of whom began his career under circumstances far less favorable than those enjoyed by the majority of the workers in industry today and at far low wages. Family, that is our time. Nice show. Read what it ain't there for the time is. I put that boy on payroll. He conversate with the clients. This ain't no baby boy shit. This only here for the Titans. Big buyers, only big buying. Big fish scale, no shrimp flying. Denzel movie, bullets flying. But they miss by him. Dropping fluids, don't slip by him. Yeah, I had to get like a hundred wins. I use my heart. Presidential, the outcome evidential. We strive for higher mental. This time, no accidental. We shine because we special. No Kim, Kali, or Kendall. The others, I ain't forget you. Some stories, this isn't mental. I'm loving this instrumental. Hey, I write my life down with a pencil. Hey, never paid attention, but I should've. Never finished blocks, the shorty just got shot Outside of the sandbox, it ain't inspiring Product of the environment, tired of seeing these niggas dying Mothers and fathers crying, we all here to iron Did you hear it too? Or maybe this one, it ain't meant for you I think about now and when I finish too I think about mind, body, and spiritual Like leaving something going, you still feel it too And writing these bars, know what I finna do Put it on the wall and laugh about how we did it too I'm praying all the good for you, but dog, I don't really know what's good for you. But listen to the end of you and don't believe in difficult. Focus on the visual, I swear we going digital. Bitcoin rising, this shit is visible. If you listen to those raps, this shit is minimal. Unless you out here trying to be a criminal. Most of the shit is taken from us, it ain't additional. No broken bones, but this medicinal lab. I get the feeling that you wishing you could go get it now. Everybody that's around start to look like a crowd. You gotta look inside yourself and start from the ground. Analyze who is there and analyze who is not. I ain't talking about family, I ain't talking about the block. I'm talking about you and everything that you got. The conductor of the train, the only one to make it stop. And the pilot on the plane, the only one to make it hot. That's when I found out it was cream in the crops. I'm on my way to the top, and now I'm getting a lot. Push forms off of the lot, dividing them in the lots. I look like I hit a lot. We turning up on the yacht. We shining a billion watts. We tying a trillion knots. They trying to boycott. They want with the boycott. Damn. Ha.